I'm often asked about that last smile of developing a React Native app, or actually getting it into the App Store. There's more to it than just building your app and sending it off to Apple or Google. You've got to make sure you add icons, splash screens, rate descriptions, and more before you can actually send it off for review. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the splash screen component of that and how you can add a splash screen or a launch screen to both your iOS application and your Android application. To get started, I'll just create a new React Native app by saying React Native init, and I'll say this is going to be splash screen demo 2. So with our application completed, I'll go ahead and actually move into that directory. And what we want to do now is go ahead and create our actual splash screen. And you're going to need multiple images, especially between iOS and Android. You could go ahead and actually create those manually for every required image size, or you could use a tool like this Image Gorilla by Ape Tools, which is going to take a single image and actually massage it around to make the appropriate splash screen sizes for both iOS and Android. So basically all we have to do here is create a 2048 by 2048 image that we want to use for the base of our splash screen. I've already used one, I've already put one together, so we'll go ahead and choose that. That's going to be splash screen base. You can see it's just a square image with an icon in the center. And with that completed, just scroll down, press Kapow. It'll take a moment to actually generate the images, but once it's done, you can download that zip file, extract it, and then we can go ahead and actually start installing all of it into our application. So you can see here the output we get from that tool. And in here we've got this Android directory, and in here we've got bunch of different directories. All we'll really care about is a few of these draw drawable directories. And here's an example of the splash screen. And then we've got the same thing for iOS here. We'll go ahead and configure iOS first. So what I want to do here is within my project directory say open iOS and then it's going to be splash demo 2 for my app. And I'm going to say Xcode proj. Open that up and that's going to open up Xcode for us. So within Xcode, I'm going to go ahead and click on the actual application over here, scroll down just a bit to the section that says app icons and launch images. And in this launch image source, I want to go ahead and click launch asset catalog. And then once this is, this pops up, press migrate. So once that's done, we can go ahead and actually delete this launch screen file. So just go ahead, delete that and leave it blank. And at the same time, if you go into this splash demo two folder, you can delete this launch screen.xib file. Move that to the trash. So with those two things completed, we can actually go to the images.xc assets that's available in the project navigator. And you can see this launch image, which is put together for us. And this is where we want to drag all of the images that were created for us by image gorilla into the Xcode. So if I open this up and I've got all of these images, not all of them will be used but fortunately Xcode will just pick up the ones that are needed. So I'll just drag those in there. And you can see it's automatically populating all of these images. And if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that some of them are unassigned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those to get rid of the warnings that Xcode would throw to us. Uh, it wouldn't be anything fatal, it's just kind of warnings that you've got extra assets that aren't needed in the application. So with all of this saved, we can go ahead and say React Native Run iOS. And you can see there, very briefly, but the actual loading screen does pop up. And at this point, you'll see this white screen show up and the loading bar at the top. That's not going to happen in the actual production application. That's just the JavaScript bundle being created for the first time in React Native. When you ship an application to production, that JavaScript bundle is going to be built already and there's not going to be that loading. So you don't have to worry about that a white screen popping up after your splash screen does and before your React Native app. So that's iOS. iOS is definitely the easier one of these two. So I'm going to delete this. I'll close this down. And now we want to actually start setting up the splash screen for the Android application. And the way we're doing the splash screen for Android isn't technically a splash screen. It's more of a launch image because the concept of splash screens doesn't really exist in Android. And we don't want to fake it where we're showing an image for some predetermined amount of time that doesn't really do anything or mean anything. We just want that image to pop up as soon as a user opens up our application, we'll show them some branding. In this case, we'll show them that image we've put together. And then as soon as our application is ready to go, the launch image will close. We'll go into our normal application. And then if there's still loading stuff that needs to go on, that should happen within our application. We shouldn't just show a uh, splash screen while that's all being set up. We need to give the user something valuable. We don't want, just want them to wait looking at an image. 
The first thing we want to do is open up the Android app project uh, within Finder, whatever uh, the, the file browsing software is you're using. But the first thing we want to do is actually open up uh, this. Let me do that a bit slower. But inside of Android app, we've got this source folder. Inside of there's main. And inside of there is this res directory. And what we want to do is copy a few of the drawable images that we got from Image Gorilla into this directory. So I go ahead and open up the output from Image Gorilla, and I go to the Android directory. You can see we've got a few of these uh, drawable directories, and that's what we want to copy over. I'm going to just copy over the directories that align with the existing MIP map directory. So we've got HDPI, we're going to get uh, MDPI, and then we'll get XHDPI and XXHDPI. I'll copy those and paste them into this res directory. Try to at least. So now we've got the image assets that we need for the Android launch screen. Now I want to open up Android Studio. So once Android Studio prompts us to, we want to open up a newer existing project. And if you navigate to your directory that you created your React Native app, you'll see this Android directory within Splash Demo, and that's what we want to actually open up. So inside of the project navigator within Android Studio, you're going to want to open up to this drawable directory that was created when we added those uh, various images. And inside of here, we want to say new drawable resource file. And we're just going to name this background splash. And I should note a lot of these Android tutorial instructions are coming from an existing blog post. I'll have that link down in the description. It goes into a lot more of the, the why behind what we're doing. So with this created, now we want to go ahead and create a new item. And inside of that item, we want to add a bitmap. And the source of this bitmap, in this case, we want it to be drawable and then screen. And if we look at the, you can see that the, the screen.png is the actual image that we brought in. So that's what's happening here. We've got the directory and then we've got the actual file we want. The next thing we want to add here is Android gravity. And then we want to set this to fill. That way the image will actually fill the screen that's showing up. And you may be worried that the aspect ratio of your image may be a little bit distorted using this process, and that is true, but I found on most of the screen sizes that I've tested that the, for my uses, the distortion is negligible and I don't really worry about it because this is an effective way of uh, actually adding that launch screen to our application. So once we've saved that, you can actually see the preview show up. The next thing we want to do is go into our va values directory, and in there we've got a styles.xml. And we want to create a new theme. So we're going to say style. And then that new theme is going to be splash theme. And we're also going to assign it a parent. And that's going to be theme.appcompat.no action bar. And inside of there, we'll give it a item. And we want to set the actual background. And that's going to be Android window background and in here we want to specify that file we put together which is going to be our uh, drawable background splash which you can see we've put together here that's the last file we were working in next thing we want to do is actually go into our android.manifest file so if we go to this what there's going to be a, a bit we're doing here uh, it's not too complicated though it can look like it especially if you just look at the kind of the git get diff but basically you can see in here we've got this activity and the name of its main activity we want to change this one and we're going to say that this is going to be splash activity and then the other thing we want to do here is set a different theme so I'm going to say Android oops, Android theme and that's going to be that new style we created which is splash theme now the next thing we want to do is actually set up our main activity again. So we're going to set up a new one. And in there we're going to give it that dot main activity that we've already got. So basically all we've done is rename the main act the previous main activity to splash activity, added this Android theme splash theme, and then created a new activity for uh, main activity, which will be what we use in just a moment. Now to round things out, we need to go ahead into our Java folder. And we want to create a new Java class. And this class is going class is going to be splash activity. Now we want to update this just a bit. So the splash activity is going to extend app 
compat activity and then we want to give it an override of it's going to be protected void on create and in here we're going to say bundle saved instance state and in there we want to say super dot on create and pass that save instance state to it next up we've got intent and that's going to be new intent this and then second is going to be main activity dot class next we've got start activity and we'll pass it intent as an argument and finally we want to call finish and then something you can do within Android Studio to actually import everything you need uh, on a Mac it's just going to be Android and then return and that'll make sure everything is uh, imported that is necessary to accomplish what we've outlined here. So with all of this set up, if I go back to my terminal now and I say React Native Run Android, and this is now once I press Run Android, things happen relatively quickly, so I want to make sure I have my simulator pulled up and ready to go. So I'm going to press Enter on that. It's going to go through the process of compiling, starting the React Native package, so that'll take a moment. So I missed it on the first pass when it actually popped up, but if you rewind it just a second or two, you'll see that the, the splash screen showed up for half a second, three quarters of a second tops. And that's what should happen on Android. On a cold start, which that just was, the splash screen should show up for just a moment, and then we should go right into the application. If the app is already in memory, shouldn't see the splash screen at all. It should go straight into our application. I hope you found this helpful. I know for Android, it was tough for me to figure out how to add splash screens to my application. So I know I'll be using this video and the associated tutorial uh, very much in the future for any future applications I build. It's just a good reference point. If you want more React Native tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to sign up for my email list, which I've got down in the description below. Subscribe to this channel for more React Native videos, and I thank you for watching. I hope you found it valuable.